Recep Tayyip Erdogan is a Turkish politician and in 2014 he was elected as the 12th president of the Turkish Republic. But did you know his ancestors were Jewish and Greek Orthodox? Erdogan was born in Istanbul in 1954. The current president of Turkey is the youngest of five siblings. His ancestors were Jewish and Greek Orthodox. His parents converted to Islam early on, and he was raised as a devout Muslim. He was brought up to take religion very seriously. He grew up in a working-class area near the harbour. As a child, little Recep and his family of seven live in a small house with just two rooms. Being a sailor, his father doesn't earn much. Erwan grows up in poverty. Later, he will live in a palace with 1,000 chambers. What a rise! His performance at school is average, but he is disciplined and pious. Literature, history and especially religion are his favourite subjects. He loves reading to his classmates from the Quran. Foreign languages are not his cup of tea. Until today, he doesn't speak a single one. His talents lie elsewhere. He loves playing soccer and he's very good at it too. His nickname in the neighbourhood is Imam Beckenbauer. His father is not at all amused. He considers playing soccer to be un-Islamic because of the short trunks, and he even forbids his son to play. Young Erwan secretly keeps on practicing. In fact, for several years, he improves. His talent doesn't go unnoticed. Talent scouts monitor him and even offer a professional contract. He refuses out of respect for his father. He meets his future wife at a party rally. After just one year, they get married. The young couple rarely spends time together because the young Erdogan is busy working on his political career. <laughs> It's a small party. The income as an operative is modest. That's why Erwan earns his money as an accountant at a sausage factory. Soon his ambition earns him the promotion into management, but he doesn't stay there for long. He wants to climb the career ladder and receives a good job offer from the municipal transport services. When one day his boss tells him to shave off his moustache, he quits without notice. A close shave, out of the question. His moustache expresses his political and religious beliefs, and these he enforces relentlessly to this day. His conservative opinions make him very popular for many Turks. In 1994, he is elected mayor of Istanbul. At a conference, he recites a fanatically religious poem, which many consider to be a call for holy war. A court sentences him to 10 months of detention and a lifelong ban from politics. The exact same thing he is now doing to critics happened to him back then, imprisonment for a poem. After his release from prison, he wants to return to politics in spite of the occupational ban. He founds a new party, which in the beginning, at least officially, is led by pals of his. In 2002, his most loyal fellow party member is elected prime minister. He enforces a change of the constitution in Erdogan's favor. The reasons for his conviction are annulled from the constitution and rephrased. In this way, they simply lever out his ban from politics. Erdogan becomes party leader and even prime minister. Because he wants the Turks to return to their national roots, he declares Iran to be a national beverage. Today, Erdogan is more controversial than ever. 
Critics accuse him of consistently restricting the freedom of opinion and press. Whoever reports critically about him is in trouble. To date, the coup against him is the latest attempt to overthrow him. We're done.